Today we are going to talk about the five things you should never tell a car dealership when you're looking to purchase a car. Millions of you buy cars every single day, so I figured I would make this video in the hopes it would help some of you out. My father actually introduced me to the world of negotiating car deals at the ripe young age of 14 years old. It started with immediate family members and then expanded out into relatives and close friends. I actually did a nice little side hustle as a teenager and a college student making commissions off the savings I would get people on their new car purchases or used car purchases. So let's go over the five things and we'll start with number one. Number one, and this is a big one, never ever tell them what you want your payment to be. Payments are very easy math calculations and there's no reason for you to have to tell someone that sells cars what you want your payment to be. You should already know in your mind before you go to the dealership what you think it should be. But that's not the point. The point is, is when they ask you what they want your payment to be, they're trying to take the purchase price off of your mind and make you focus on a payment. And payments can be manipulated in two different ways. One is term, which is the length of the loan, and number two is the interest rate. The higher the interest rate, the more money they make on the loan. But that's two ways that your payment can be manipulated. So never ever start off a negotiation that way. It's a really bad way to get tricked, okay? So don't focus on the payment. We wanna focus on the purchase price of the vehicle because that cannot be manipulated, okay? And this is the second part of part one when it comes to payments. Do not tell them how you plan to pay for this car, whether it's a lease, whether it's cash or finance. That's something they're gonna to use to kind of try and manipulate that price again. There's different incentives for cash or leasing and they're gonna tell you that they only apply to one thing. Sometimes that's the case, but usually it's not. You wanna pay the same price no matter what you're doing, okay? You wanna get the same number whether you are gonna lease, purchase, or finance. But if there are advantages, to one way or the other. Um, that's something you can retain for your internal knowledge and research You know, through all this stuff like Edmunds or whatever. That's usually what I use on uh, rates and stuff and incentives. So you wanna know all that before you go. But do not tell them how you plan to pay for this car. You wanna leave that out in the air so that way they can't manipulate that price at all. One thing I wanted to touch on on the manipulation of payments, if you're gonna lease a car, you really need to know what the cap rate is on that car from BMW or Porsche or whoever you're buying a car from, Chevy, Hyundai, doesn't matter. Because the cap rate on a lease is the interest rate. So you don't want them to manipulate that either. There's a basic rate and you can actually convert that money factor or the cap rate and multiply it by 2400 to get the interest rate. So those are all important things to know in part one. When it comes to payments, there's a lot of ways that can work. And I'll talk in another series about whether it is more advantageous to pay cash or lease or finance a car. Number two, don't tell them if you're trading in your car. As a matter of fact, don't even drive that car up there. If you do, tell them you're not trading it in. They always like to manipulate numbers with a trade-in. They'll show you a big high number on your trade-in and make you pay sticker for the car, or they'll take a lot off the car and show you high number on the trade-in. That's an easy, easy number to get manipulated around. I'll do a separate series about specifically trade-ins and how to work that deal. But don't tell them you have a trade-in. We're focusing on purchase price, people. And that's gonna be a recurring theme, is purchase price is what we are focusing on. Number three, do not give them your social security number, okay? And when you do give them your driver's license, you need to know that they sometimes they can pull your credit off just that. So you need to make it clear that you do not want them to run your credit. Every time your credit gets run, it dings your score a little bit, four or five points. That could be the difference between a really good interest rate and a worse interest rate. So that's something you don't want to do. Don't give them your social security number until you've got all the numbers worked out. Check your credit score before you go, okay? And know what your rate should be based off that credit score. I could probably do a whole other video just on credit scores, because that is so important. A lot of people say, well, I'll just pay cash. Well, that's great, but you can make a lot more money not paying cash for things and just having a great credit score that helps you borrow money at a low rate. But please do not share that information because that's just not something they need to know and that doesn't need to bring your score down. This is number four. This goes along with the payment. They're gonna ask you, what do you wanna pay for this car? And your answer is gonna be, I don't know. Okay, I do not know what I wanna pay for this car. And in your mind, you're gonna know what you wanna pay, but don't give them any numbers, because then once they get that number, they're gonna think they've met the deal. You always need to keep that number in your mind, but not out in the open. That way, you can get the price down as low as you possibly can. You could even get it lower than the number you want. I always say, what's your best price? Okay, that's what we wanna focus on. Not what my price is, 
or your price is, what is the best price I can buy this car for? And that's a very important thing to do. The more information you give these dealerships, the more they have to leverage you in certain situations. So don't tell them what you want the purchase price to be. Number five, this is a big one. Do not tell these dealerships how much you love this car, okay? Don't tell them it's the perfect spec. Don't tell them anything like that, guys. You just want to tell them that you are interested in this kind of car, but if it's the perfect color, don't tell them any of that. You're giving them ammo on things that would persuade you to buy this car, okay? That's why they ask you all these questions. So don't show them you like the car. If you bring your wife along, don't let her say that she likes the car or just leave her at home if she can't control her emotions. These are important things that you need to know because you don't want to give them any leverage on you. So if you like it, that's great, but keep that in the back of your mind. Do not show interest in the car. This is a bonus round. This is number six. I know I said there would be five, but there's one more. Do not start off your conversations, if, even if you have bad credit, okay? Do not start listing off all the bad decisions you've made or anything like this, okay? That is for your internal knowledge. Don't start confessing to these people every wrong turn you've made in your life or mistake you've made financially. Your credit score, you should already know that. So just don't unload all that. It's not necessary. And I know a lot of people feel like they can confide in these people for some reason, but do not tell them all these kind of things that you've messed up on. There's just no reason to do that. It'll help you in your negotiation um, if you just kind of leave that at bay. So in conclusion, those are my five things plus one, the bonus round about your life story that you should not tell a car salesman or GM or any kind of manager they claim that comes in and talks to you at all, okay? And these will help you a lot in negotiating a deal, a whole lot. You would be really surprised how much it helps you. It frustrates them. I've been kicked out of dealerships before, but that's the way you have to play the game to get the best absolute price. And even when I've gotten the lowest price, I still try and go for more and I drag it out. Also, the end of the month, a really good time to buy cars because that's when they're usually trying to meet their sales goals. They'll call you back after a couple weeks if you can't come to a deal in the middle of the month. That's what I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed it. Like the channel, subscribe. If you think this was educational, share it with your friends who maybe aren't the best at buying cars. I'm gonna do another segment on how to really negotiate and get the best deal, how to find a car for the best deal, and how to execute on that with the five steps I've just shown you. And I'll do kind of a role play on exactly how I would put that deal together to make sure that you're just getting the bottom line price on these cars. Hope you enjoyed these first five tips and stay tuned for part two.